Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, this is week six lecture and we're gonna talk about data representation. The mean of data representation is how do we represent all the form of data uh, in our day life in the computer. So in this lecture we will know the two way of storing data electronically. Then uh, we're gonna know that computer know only binary number so we're gonna define the concept of binary number and then uh, we will try to differentiate between decimal number and binary number and how do we convert from decimal to binary number we also uh, gonna talk about how the character and the text are represented when saved on the computer and how the sound and image are also saved on the computer and at the end since we have different data type we wanna know how the computer can differentiate between this these different data type so data can be stored electronically in two, in two ways either analog or digital Analog are represented by the continuous wave like the sine wave, where digital is discrete in nature. Uh, the signal is our way of sending the information from one device uh, to another. So again, uh, what do I mean by uh, analog signal? Analog signal is a continuous wave uh, that keep on changing over time uh, and it's represented by the sine wave and I would say that think about the analog signal as uh, infinite uh, set of possibility or of value uh, because a continuous in math mean that I have infinite set of value in regard to digital signal it is discrete discrete that's mean like i have a, fi a finite set of value and in case of the computer we usually uh, represent uh, the information in a form of two value and they are one and zero and we usually we represent the digital signal by the square weight so analog is continuous in nature and uh, the idea is if you want to know the value in a point of time you wouldn't know the exact value uh, you are gonna get an approximation but in the digital signal since we have a finite set of value it's gonna be either zero or one it's not gonna be something else but here it could be 2.5, 2.3 uh, and whatever because we have infinite set of value. So in our life, uh, we communicate with each other with analog data. If we think about number, we have infinite set of number. We don't have a limit for the number. Also the letter, uh, we have Arabic, we have Japanese, we have English and the image are also infinite like uh, there is some image that are available now and there is image that's going to be produced in the future and uh, we have multiple sound and also if we think about the color we have infinite set of color uh, so how can we represent these analog data in the computer that can only understand two value which are the zero and one uh, and also the computer is limited by the capacity so like if I have infinite possibility how the computer can store this infinite possibility uh, so to explain uh, obviously the computer cannot store infinite possibility uh, but we will understand how the computer can uh, 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 can store these different possible uh, value uh, in uh, a representation of 0 and 1 and that's why we need to talk about the binary number to explain the idea of binary number let's talk about a system that use uh, an idea similar to the binary number 
This system is called Lewis Braille system. If you know Braille, he is a person who is blind and he created a language for the blind people. Uh, Lewis Braille system is an, an early example of binary representation of data. So what do I mean by binary? Binary mean two uh, by using two symbol. If we're going to look at the Braille alphabet uh, way of representing uh, the character of English, we can notice that we have two symbols. It's denoted by the black dot, and you can see some dot here that they are uh, white or they are flat. So actually, the blind person cannot see, so he, he, he used or she used her hand to uh, and touch this symbol and a base, if, it, uh, if it's raised or flat, they can know the difference. So Braille alphabet use a combination of this raised and flat symbol to make the alphabet of a Braille, which is the language for the blind. So, uh, in regard to Braille alphabet, we will understand that Braille alphabet is consists of six dot. Why Braille use the six dot? It's going to become apparent if we go over the examples. Let me uh, uh, remember that we are trying to make uh, a characters or we make a representation for the blind people uh, to differentiate between different character so let's say that actually I have one dot if I have one dot what is the possibility for this dot the possibility for this dot it's either to be a flat or raised and in the uh, following example I will uh, replace the flat and raised by the color so like one of them is gonna be white and another will be black so if I only have one dot what is the different possibility that I will have with this dot you would tell me the different possibility is two, which are uh, the dot will be white or the dot will be black. So the number of unique possibility is two. How about now if I have two dot? If I have two dot, the possibility is that both two dot will be white. And let's assume that I'm going to represent number one to be the dot that they are white. Now let's look at the second possibility. I would say the first one is white, the second one I'm going to make it black. Uh, the third possibility is that I'm going to make the first one black and uh, uh, the second one white. The fourth possibility is to make both of them black. As you can see this is unique and this is the number of possibility and by these uh, two dots that they could be either white or black I can make a system that uh, represent four value that could be one two and three and four now I want to tell you how about if I uh, increase the number of dot to three how many possible value you will have uh, to explore that let's work on this example so I already have here with the two dot is uh, two white now with this example how many possible way I can create with the three dot you would say the third dot I can make it white or the third dot I can make it black which is the same here so like uh, the three dot will be white or like the first two dot is white and then black. Uh, now I'm going to come here and also I will say the first one is white, then black. And now I have two options for the third white, either to make it white or to make it black. The same goes for this one. I have black, white, so I have an option to make one white and another option to make it a black which is here uh, black white white black white black 
For the other option uh, here uh, in the previous one, I have already two black. What is the other option that I have is to make the third one white and uh, uh, in the other option to make the third one a black. Uh, if I told you how many the number of pattern, the unique pattern that you will have with a three dot, it's going to be eight. And uh, so as I said, with the three dot, we're going to get eight pattern. If I know the number of uh, unique pattern that I'm going to use to represent my system uh, with the previous number of dot, like for example, with a braille, with two dot is four, and the question is asking you how many pattern you will get with uh, three dot. You, the thing that you will do is gonna you're gonna multiply four by two to get the eight pattern. So if you know the previous pattern, you can get easily uh, the number of pattern if you increase only one dot because uh, and why it is the twice because like when i go in every possibility in the previous pattern i said we have two options either to make the dot white or to make it black to make a unique uh, pattern so with three dot we're gonna get eight pattern with four dot we're gonna get 8 multiplied by 2, which is 16. With 5 dot, we're going to get 16 multiplied by 2, which is 32. And with 6 dot, we're going to get 32 multiplied by 2, which is 64. So this means that the Braille alphabet is consists of 64 unique pattern. Why the Braille system needed the six dot because the five dot can represent only 32 and 32 were not enough to represent the whole uh, language for the blind people so again as i said uh, if you know uh, the previous number of pattern and you increase the dot by one uh, every time you add an extra dot that give you twice as many pattern for but if uh, they give you the number of a dot uh, and they say that the system is binary uh, you can use this formula the formula says the number of different symbol to the power of the number of dot so we know it's a binary system so the number of different symbol is going to be two so two to the power of the number of dot if i say the number of dot is four i would say two to the power of four is going to be 16. so if i have five dot 2 to the power of 5 is going to be give me 32 because it's 2 multiplied by 2 uh, 5 times. So a braille system, as I said, such an early representation of binary system and binary used to symbol. Uh, the computer uh, device use a similar representation uh, called the binary number. The binary number is the way that the digital devices are used to save and manipulate data. Uh, data uh, in binary number, all the value are represented using only the two binary digits, 0 and 1, which we call them bit. So 0 is 1 bit and 1 is 1 bit. Uh, to distinguish the binary number from the number that we use in our life, that we're going to call them the decimal, the decimal number, uh, we're going to use the super, uh, the subscript 2 in, uh, in the number. Like, uh, if I didn't put this subscript and I told you to read this number, you would tell me 1,101. Uh, but with binary number, it's just 1101. In the other hand, we have number 13 here. Number 13 is a decimal number because of the subscript uh, 10. So the binary system is like any other system. The number that uh, the numbering system that we know is called the decimal system. 
why we call it the decimal system because it has base 10 and 10 is the number of different symbol uh, because we have 10 possible value from 0 to 9 e all number in the decimal system can be uh, produced by a combination of uh, 0 to 9 in binary system the number of unique uh, symbol is going to be 2 and the base is 2 why because we have only two possible value which are 0 or 1 the same as in any base zero digit has none contribution so like if you add zero to the one it's gonna give you one where one has a contribution which depend at the position so uh, I think you remember this game uh, for uh, the children. Uh, if I ask you what is the number in here, you would say it's 3,122. And why you did that? Because you know this is the thousand, this is the hundred, this is uh, the tenth, and this is the ones. So another way to think about how did we do uh, the math for it is that we say that the number here is multiply by 10 to the power of 0. 10 to the power of 0 is 1. That's giving me 2. Then I came here. This is 2 multiply by 10 to the power of 1. 10 to the power of 1 is going to give me 20. Now I'm going to come to the 100. 100 is uh, because like I have only one uh, ring here. It's going to be 1 multiplied by 10 uh, to the power of 2. It's going to be 1 multiplied by 100, which is 100. And then here in the 1000, I have 3 rings. And since it's 1000, it's 3 multiplied by 10. Uh, to the power of a 3 it's gonna give me a 3 multiplied by 1000 which is a 3000 and the thing that we're gonna do is gonna sum the result as here so 2 plus 20 plus 100 plus 3000 it's gonna give me 3122 To get the value in binary numbering system, we say the binary numbering system has a base 2. And uh, it's base 2 because we have only two the value which are the 1 and 0. And each position similar to this decimal is a power of 2 while in decimal is a power of 10. So if I want, so this number here is in binary. If I want to know the value of this binary uh, number in decimal, I would do the following procedure. So this is the number I'm going to come from the right to the left. Uh, from the right, the first uh, uh, bit is 1 and I would say 1 multiply by 2 to the power of 0. 2 to the power of 0 is 1 so 1 multiply by 1 is going to equal to 1. Then I'm going to go to the second digit from the right to left. It's in the second position so it's going to be 0 multiply by 2 to the power of 1 which is 0 multiply by 2 and we say 0 uh, doesn't have a contribution on the summation but in the multiplication usually it's gonna remove whatever here so it's gonna be zero one uh, then we go to the third digit it's in the third position and in the third position one multiplied by two to the power of two it's gonna be one multiplied by four it's gonna give me four and then for the fourth digit is one multiplied by two to the power of a three and uh, one multiply by 2 to the power of a 3, 2 to the power of a 3 is 8, so 1 multiplied by 8 is going to be 8. If we sum them, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 4 is 5, 5 plus 8 is going to be 13. So this binary number is a representation of number 13 in decimal. 
So again, computer are electronic device and they only know zero or one. Why they know zero and one? Because we are talking about electronic device which know the switches which is zero and one. Uh, uh, binary coded are device. So like uh, the binary code that we saw here were device to represent a specific decimal number which was the 13. And we use the binary code to represent not even num not only number but also letter, color, sound, and image, as we see, we will see in this lecture. Uh, so each zero or one is called a binary digit or bit. By placing them side by side, we can create a binary code. So if I have the binary code here, zero, and I told you how many number of bit, you would tell me that this zero is have one bit. It could be that this binary code here is not zero, it could be one. And again, the number of bit is going to be one. In this example, the binary code is one zero. If I ask how many number of bit is two, because it's having two bit next to each other. Uh, the binary code here is 1011. If I ask the number of bit, it's going to be 4 because it's the number of bit. I have uh, 3 ones and 0 and so on. So uh, if we increase the number of bit and I want you to uh, make a connection that the number of bit is similar to number of dot in a braille system so if we increase the number of bit we can increase the number of unique binary code and we can use this binary code to represent more uh, data so, uh, if I have one bit, if you remember uh, the formula in the Braille uh, system, it says the number of unique symbol, and since we are using binary, the number of unique symbol is 2, and then the number uh, to the power of the number of bit. So here I'm going to add the number of bit. So if I have the number of bit to be 1, the number of unique the number of possible uh, value is going to be 2 so here i have the decimal number 0 and 1 uh, 0 and 1 i can represent them using only one bit binary number so i can represent the 0 with 0 and i can represent the 1 with 1 but if i come to number 2 i cannot represent it with one bit i need to, uh, to in order to represent it i would need uh, uh, two bit and again if my system is a two bit it's going to be 2 to the power of 2 which going to be uh, which mean like my system can represent four value so in this case i can represent zero as zero zero i can represent one as uh, zero one zero one and i can represent the two as one zero i can represent the three as one one if i come to number four because uh, the two bit is not enough i would need to increase the number of bit to three so with the three uh, i can represent the zero in this way i can represent the one in this way i can uh, represent uh, the two in this way the three in this way and so on so this is the hunt uh, the one zero zero is the four one oh one is the five one one zero is the six one 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 is the seven and uh, number eight it cannot be represented with uh, three uh, with a three bit i would need a four bit so with this formula uh like for example two to the three it's gonna give me 
eight unique pattern but I know uh, that I start from zero so the uh, maximum number I can represent with a three bit is gonna be number seven so uh, the process that we take uh, to convert uh, analog uh, data to a uh, sequence of 0 and 1 is called digitizing. Uh, from the number example, we can see that the computer can handle data as long they are presented in binary form. Uh, the analog number have become now digital data and not only the number we will see also the text the image that we need to make them digital data if it was possible to create code to represent all our analog data it would appear as a group of zero and one uh, and the computer will able to handle this data so the conversion from the analog to the digital data is called digitizing this word here so here is some example of uh, converting a binary number to a decimal equivalent uh, we denoted the binary number with two to differentiate between and here it's gonna be three and decimal 10 13 and decimal and so on so this is the number one one uh, the procedure is is that we're gonna start from the right to the left and each position since this is a binary number each position is a power of two and we start with the power of two to the power of zero so in this example one multiplied by two to the power of zero is gonna be one multiplied by one which is one and then we're gonna come to the one here which is one multiplied by two to the power of one, which is one multiplied by two, it's gonna be equal to, then we sum them, it's gonna give us three, as we saw here, that a three is in, in binary is one one. The same goes for this example, this number is in binary, so we start from the right, and we multiply by the power of two based on the position. So here, one multiplied by two to the power of zero is gonna be one multiplied by one, which is one. Then we come here, one multiplied by two to the power of one, it's gonna give me one multiplied by two, which is two. Then I'm gonna come here, zero multiplied by two to the power of two is gonna be zero multiplied by two by four which is zero and the same go here because zero if it's multiplied by anything is gonna give me zero but I need to make sure that I multiply it by the correct position so I don't have uh, a confusion with uh, the second bit uh, even here I'm gonna come here one multiply by two to the power of four and two to the power of four is 16 then I'm gonna sum the number here 1 plus 2 is gonna be 3 plus 0 is a 3 plus 0 is a 3 plus 16 is gonna be 19 the same goes here and you can do it by yourself this is a regard to a uh, number representation now let's talk about character and text representation Character representation. The character is a single letter and usually in the programming languages we denote it by uh, a single quotation. Uh, if we want to talk about how do we represent a character in the computer, there is no natural correspondence to binary number. Uh, we cannot say like the same as we when we talked about uh, the decimal number and how do we get uh, the value of the decimal number in the same way how do we get the value of the binary number in regard to the decimal number. Uh, for this reason, uh, the computer scientists devise an arbitrary system for representing character as a bit pattern. And this uh, system was called ASCII, American Standard Code, 
for information interchange. Uh, it is a scheme used to represent only the American character and punctuation in addition to the digit. Uh, each character in this uh, system uh, will be represented by 8 bit of pattern. The 8 bit of pattern uh, or 8 bit, uh, 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 if we have uh, 8 bit we usually call the 8 bit one byte uh, so each letter or each character is represented by a binary code that consists of 8 bit uh, all the digits are contin uh, contiguous as uh, are lower and uppercase letter uh, so uh, we would we want to we're going to see that uh, this uh, binary code representation actually if we take this binary code uh, and we convert it to a decimal number uh, it's gonna give me uh, a specific number but this number for zero it's gonna be less for uh, one and uh, the number eight is gonna be less than nine in a decimal uh, also, uh, if we're going to take the binary code for the A, the binary code is going to be, uh, if we convert it to decimal, it's going to be less uh, than uh, the binary code of uh, B. So, uh, in the programming languages, uh, if we use something like this, is uh, the character 0 is less than 1, this is going to be uh, a correct statement uh, and uh, we can use it in the programming language again the ASCII is only for the American character is 8-bit so if I ask you what is the number of unique uh, uh, pattern that 8-bit can uh, give me you will uh, use the formula which is 2 to the power of 8 and 2 to the power of 8 is gonna give me 250 Six, two hundred fifty-six is not enough for all uh, the character in the world. Uh, that's why, or it's not uh, uh, enough for other languages like, for example, Japanese, Chinese, and uh, Arabic. Uh, that's why they define the Unicode. The Unicode is another scheme, another representation. Uh, it's an extension to the ASCII. It's used the 16-bit and so the number of the unique uh, character in this scheme it's gonna be 2 to the 16 and I mean when I say it is 16-bit that's mean like each character is represented by binary code that has 16-bit on it so the unicode is a 16-bit uh, uh, pattern and it support other language in addition to the english if you remember here uh, when I talk about this, I say that the one bit uh, is able to represent the zero and the one. The two bit is able to represent the zero, the one, the two, and the three. The three bit is able to represent this thing. It's the same now with the Unicode. The Unicode is able to represent the English character, but in addition to the English character, is able to represent the other languages. Uh, but the difference between the Unicode and the ASCII is the way of the representation. So in the ASCII, we use the 8-bit. In the Unicode, we use the 16-bit. Uh, again, in the ASCII and the Unicode representation, we have digit, we have uppercase letter and lowercase letter. Uh, the digit is going to be binary code, but if we're going to take the binary code and we convert them to the decimal, we're going to see that 0 is going to be 48 and 9 is going to be 57. So 1 is going to be 49 and so on. Uh, in regard to the uppercase letter in ASCII. So this is in uh, ASCII. Uh, uh, if I'm going to take uh, 
the the a for example the capital a uh, uh, the binary code of it if i uh, convert it uh, to decimal it's going to give me uh, 65 and the z is going to be 90 uh, and the same is for uh, the lowercase letter the small a is going to be uh, 90 if i convert the binary code to decimal it's going to be uh, 97 uh, through 122 which is going to be the small z okay that's why uh, the ordering is important and enable program to uh, and programmer to perform comparison of character value like if a is less than b so like if i want to make a sort uh, for the name uh, i can uh, compare the first letter in the first name with uh, the first letter in the second name and i would say if the first letter in the first name is less than the first letter letter in the second name uh, that's mean uh, I'm gonna put it uh, in the sorted order first again I say that each character in ASCII is a binary code that consists of eight bit uh, so even the space is a character that has a specific code so the A here it, this is the binary code for it and if I convert this binary code to a number uh, the, the value of this binary code will be 65 I hope it's clear right now so when the computer keyboard is being called uh, is being used the ASCII code are sent to the computer as the character are type so uh, this is the ASCII code will be sent to the computer uh, the computer will combine the stream of bit into bytes and again what do I mean by bytes it's 8 bit it's a collection of 8 bit so the thing that's gonna happen that the computer will divide this to uh, like it's gonna count one two three four five six seven eight so this is the first character and this is the second character and if it's longer this is what's gonna do one two three four eight and then uh, it's gonna say this is a character uh, and uh, then take uh, this uh, first part uh, and if we take this uh, first part and convert it to decimal, it's going to be 84. And 84 will be the capital T. And if we take this uh, number here and we convert it to decimal, it's going to be 52. And 52 is the digit 4. Uh, another way is that we're going to go uh, to the... Uh, table here and we're gonna uh, see what is the code uh, we're gonna find the code here and we can see the corresponding here so the a letter when you type the a letter in uh, the keyboard this is the thing that's gonna be stored in the computer this binary number String, on the other hand, are uh, a sequence of character. Uh, it's a collection of character, and so they are a sequence of ASCII code, one for each character in the string. So if I have the string, and again, also the string, we use the single quotation or the double quotation in the programming language, and uh, uh, Again, uh, this is the way that it's going to be represented by a sequence of uh, ASCII code. So the if this is the code for it, or this is the code for it, and so on. Uh, and again, each uh, ASCII code is uh, represented, each character is represented by 8-bit or 1-byte. So 8-bit mean 1-byte. So if I ask how many bytes do you have in uh, this string, you will say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I have 
six byte. If I ask you how many bit you have in this string, it's going to be uh, six multiplied by eight, which is uh, 48. Okay. Let's talk now about color representation. Also, color are represented using a sequence of bit. With one bit, we can represent two color. Uh, with one bit, uh, we have two possibility, either zero or one, and that's why I will have two possible color. With two bit, uh, I can represent four possible color. With a three bit, I can represent eight possible color, and so on. If I have 30 bit, uh, 32 bit, I can represent two to the power of 32 uh, color. And it's same applying here, like how I know it's eight because it's two to the power of a three. Uh, for example, I can, uh, if I have two bit, I can represent uh, four color. The zero zero could be white, the zero one could be the light gray, the one zero could be the dark gray, and the one one will be the black. Why here is saying of of? It just like is. Uh, uh, a metaphor for how the computer is gonna work. The computer is a switch, uh, use a collection of a switch, the transistor, and uh, the zero is representing when the switch is off and the one is representing when the switch is on. Let's talk now about image representation. Image also need to be converted into binary in order for the computer to process them so they can be seen in our screen. Image are made up of pixels. And what I mean by pixel is this square here. So in reality, you usually you don't see the screen. You just see the space here with a white background. But here, we just want you to understand that actually each image, uh, the image is a collection of pixels. So pixel is a small area with associated coordinate location. If we are here in the x, y, the XY coordinate, we can say that this, for example, is uh, the pixel that's available in point zero zero. This is the idea of the pixel, okay? Uh, sometimes it's like this, sometimes it's inverted in the programming language, maybe sometimes it's from, uh, uh, from here, this is the, the thing that's considered zero zero. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, uh, related to a programming, but this is the idea when they say, what they mean by the uh, coordinate location. It's uh, this part, this is pixel, this is pixel. Each of these square are considered pixel and I, they have a location uh, with X and Y. If it's two, a 2D picture, uh, if this is what I'm talking about. Uh, so each pixel in an image is made up of binary number. Uh, to create a, a picture, we need to have a grid uh, uh, and the square can be colored uh, based on the number of bits that this image is having. But before a grid can be created, we need to know the dimension of the a grid. Uh, so uh, the dimension of the grid is a, an example of something we call metadata. And metadata is a word to represent uh, data about the data. It's an information that we want to know about the data. So for the image, so for the computer to create an image, they need some data. And one of these metadata 
uh, is uh, the dimension. Uh, the dimension of the image, uh, for example, uh, is uh, 1200 multiplied by 946. Uh, this is going to create for me an image that have the width uh, 1200 pixel and the height 964 uh, pixel. What do I mean by metadata is all uh, the data that we get about the image. If you right click on the image and you went to detail, these are examples of the metadata. So it is information about the data and that we have now, which is the image. Like all these information here are example of metadata. So if the dimension of the image is 10 by 10, this means that the picture will have 10 pixel here and 10 pixel here. And if I'm gonna ask you what is the total number of pixel that this image have, it's gonna be 10 multiplied by 10, which is 100 pixel. Uh, so actually, again, this picture here is a representation of an image that has uh, a white background. If we zoom the image enough, we can see that the image is pixelated in this way. And if the image is only black and white, this image is represented only with one bit because one bit is able to represent two values, which are the one, uh, the black and the white. So if uh, uh, this image here, as I said, it's a, a white background and usually you will not see uh, the pixel. This is if I zoom it. And if I zoom it, uh, you, we will see that here, for example, uh, the zero is a representation of the white and the one is a representation of the black. Uh, so, from our understanding that each pixel will have a certain color and this color will be represented uh, by uh, a bit code. Uh, image equality is affected by the resolution of the image. What do we mean by the resolution? The resolution of the image is a way of describing how tightly back the pixel are. Uh, or in another way, it's the number of pixel uh, the image have per inch. Uh, and the resolution of the image will depend on the camera that is taking the image. Uh, if the camera is taking uh, uh, a lot number, uh, a large number of pixel per inch, uh, the resolution of the image will be bigger. Uh, in a low resolution image or if the camera is taking a low resolution image, uh, the image will have a very few pixel per inch. Pixel per inch. Uh, and if we try to zoom it, the image, uh, first of all, will be kind of a small and if we try to zoom it, it's going to look pixelated as the image here. And we kind of, we will see that uh, the, the actual uh, uh, creation of the image, which is consisting of pixel. So we can kind of see the square. Uh, but if the image has a high resolution, which means has more pixel per inch, uh, the image will look okay, even if we stretch the image and zoom uh, in. But the downside of having more pixel is that uh, each pixel will have a binary code and it's going to depend on uh, the number of bits in that binary code. So like if it's white and black, I have only one bit. But I mean like if it's colorful, uh, it's going to have more bits. And the downside of having more pixel with more color is that the file size will be bigger. All form of data that we see on the internet, image, video, etc. are compressed 
and why they are compressed because we want to reduce the size of the data to ensure faster transmission between devices or over the internet. Choosing the correct format and compression is a major factor to determine the image size on the disk. That's why we have two compression types. The first compression type is called looseless, meaning even if I compress the image uh, to make the file smaller, no information is lost in the compression. This is an example of compressing the image in looseless format. Loosey means that information is lost in the compression and it's not fully reversible. So the idea of compression is that I try to compress the image. Uh, so like the file size will be smaller. So if I save it on the hard disk, it's going to be smaller. But when I open it again and load it to the main memory, uh, if it loosey, uh, I lost some. I lost the information with the compression, uh, so I'm not gonna uh, get uh, the previous image that I compress it before the compression. But with looseless, uh, yes, the file size will be a little bit smaller. But when I open it in the main memory, it's gonna return back. It's gonna return back we without losing of the information. That's why here it says Lucy, it's not fully reversible. Uh, but the Lucy compression format is more efficient in decreasing the size. So we can see uh, the difference between the Lucy and the looseless compression. If you are a professional photographer, you most likely want to use the looseless format because like uh, the highlight here may be important for you. Uh, but we can see here in the Lucy format, still we know this is a Kiwi <laughs> uh, and uh, kind of uh, or maybe these details are not important for uh, for us uh, is not like really changing uh, the information uh, in a bad way uh, but again the Lucy format uh, the file size will be smaller uh, the lose less uh, it's gonna try to compress the image but uh, and make the file size a little bit smaller but it's not gonna be smaller like the Lucy so let's talk about the most common image compression format. The most common image compression format is we can see them when we click on the image that it's stored in the, uh, in the computer and we click on the information. Usually it's the extension of the image. Uh, so we have an image dot, for example, something. Uh, so the first type is called GIF, a graphic inter, uh, interchange format. It's a looseless format. That means when we save the image, we are not losing uh, any uh, information. We are not losing any information. Uh, but the downside of uh, the GIF uh, uh, compression format is it has only 8-bit per pixel. 8-bit per pixel, that means that the color uh, range for the GIF is at most is 256. Uh, GIF is used for precise pictures such as line, drawing, and usually used with animated pictures. So if you see an animated picture like the one here, most likely it's going to be uh, GIF. Uh, but you can see that uh, the color range are not a lot uh, in compared to the other compression format. The other example of compression format is the PNG, the Portable Network Graphic. It's also loses format. Uh, the advantage of PNG is uh, it's allowing more color by providing more number of bit per pixel. So the PNG uh, ha can have eight bit per pixel, can have uh, thirty two bit per pixel, and it can have uh, forty six bit per pixel. Uh, 
what we are using the BNG for usually the BNG is used in the logo and text with uh, and it's work best with a transparent background uh, that's why it's uh, usually the case that uh, you will see this kind of format with BNG because this thing at the at the back is represented of the transparent background and this is actually the reason of uh, the number of increase the number uh, of bit because it support the transparent background uh, in really nice way so uh, if you take a screenshot in your uh, mobile phone and you look at the extension uh, of uh, the image you will notice it's png and the reason for choosing the png for the screenshot is because most of the time the screenshot will have a text and if we use a different version we will lose some information so we can see that the the text will not look uh, clear as in png GBG is an, uh, also uh, another example of image compression format. It is a LUSI format. Uh, the number of bit uh, per pixel is 24 bit per pixel. Uh, so we can see that the range of color uh, is less than 64, uh, less than the BNG. Uh, but the, the advantage of GBG over the BNG is the LUSI format, so the file size will be smaller. Usually, the GBG is used in a photography and digital camera. So when you are taking a picture in your iPhone and digital camera, usually the GBG is used. Uh, but it's not good for a line and text because it's a loosey format. So when the, you are saving uh, the image with the text uh, or line, we can see uh, some distortion. Uh, on them. Uh, the uh, GBG does not support animation or transparent background. So if you are creating an image and you want to have an animation, better to use the GIF, but you will not have enough color range. Uh, if you want uh, uh, a transparent background, I will vote for the PNG. Uh, if you want uh, a file with a small size and with a good range of color, uh, it's going to be uh, the GPG. Uh, the reason why the GPG is used in the mobile phone is because usually you're going to take an image and you want to send it. So they, that's why uh, they wanted to increase the number, the range of the color and also at the same time to decrease the file size. Sound representation. Computer, as we say, it, is capable of representing number, text, images, and also sound. But more complex data like the sound and uh, the movie are requiring more uh, additional technique and algorithm. So, in regard to sound, uh, it also it must be represented in a finite way using binary code. And the sound is inherently analog and usually represented as a wave. And all of us know that uh, sound uh, uh, have the multiple sound could have different amplitude and different frequency as we can see with all these different uh, music devices. Uh, when we were using the cassette, uh, we uh, were recording using the analog signal. Uh, but if we want to record an analog signal, we cannot produce it exactly. Uh, 
uh, and it wasn't a problem because the human ear cannot notice uh, these inconsistency in the sound recording but if we take this recorded cassette and we make a copy from it and then this copy we take another copy from it and we copy it using the analog uh, copying that was used uh, the error produced in uh, the first copy will be propagated to the second copy and the error will increase and in, then in the third copy the error will increase more and then we can notice the difference uh, if you ask your family member who were using the cassette they might tell you that we can end up in some time with a cassette that we cannot understand what's the person saying on it uh, that's why uh, we end up with the shift to uh, digital recording digital recording can be reproduced exactly uh, without uh, the extent that we will uh, arrive at damaging the sound quality how uh, the digital recording happen by taking uh, the analog uh, signal uh, we take the analog signal and we try uh, to get a discrete value from this analog uh, signal using a process called digital sampling. Uh, so what is a digital sampling? The uh, digital sampling is the process in which an amplitude of a wave is measured at regular interval and stored at discrete measurement. So again, when I talked about the analog signal, I said the analog signal is consists of infinite value. So for any uh, uh, small uh, period of time here, we can get uh, a value here. And uh, this is going to be infinite because uh, of the continuity of this wave. Uh, so uh, in order for us uh, to represent this uh, analog signal in the computer, we need to come to this wave and we would say like we want to take a specific sample and we're gonna measure the amplitude at this specific sample so for me i would know at this time that this is the value of the wave but what's about the value in this part we wouldn't know exactly so we will lose some information but we can get this information or, or value through estimation uh, but anyway, this is happening only one time and then we have uh, a discrete uh, value and these discrete value can be converted to 0 and 1. So this is how we can convert an analog signal to a digital signal. So with digital sampling, we are taking some point at a regular interval like for example here and for making sure that we are uh, not losing a lot of information we are try we are gonna try to make the interval smaller to be approximate of the analog signal for example like this then we gonna measure the amplitude at uh, this uh, uh, point uh, to get the value and then we gonna get uh, the discrete uh, value that will enable us to store them uh, in the computer Uh, similar uh, to the image, a file also 
uh, use compression format because if we try to make them uh, to if we try uh, to capture the digital recording as close as possible to uh, to the analog signal the file will be uh, large in size to so the main uh, so there is uh, obviously many uh, file uh, compression format uh, available but the two main file standard uh, known are the wave and the mp3 wave is an example of a loseless compression format this means the recording is reproduced with any loose in audio quality so when we are saving the file on the computer using this format is uh, the same way we did the digital sampling we are gonna store it Therefore, the audio file is going to be large in size. In regard to MP3, uh, it's a loosey compression format. That means like in when we are storing uh, 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 this uh, discrete value in the computer, uh, we might uh, end up with uh, removing some information to make the file size smaller. And usually, the MB3 will try to remove information that is not going to be uh, uh, easily identify for most average listener but again as I said this is gonna reduce the file size uh, mb3 is easy to distribute over the internet or to store it in the cloud this is the main reason why mb3 has become a standard for purchasing music over uh, uh, online or even use in portable device like the device here mp3 a player so if you go to uh, iTunes or Spotify, usually you would find the file in MP3. Now let's talk about movie representation. Uh, in principle, a, a movie is actually a sequence of images. Uh, if you're gonna look uh, at uh, a movie of person talking about a specific uh, uh, topic, you're gonna see that it's actually a sequence of uh, image of the same person talking where his lips is moving. Uh, but usually, uh, if he is standing in a still background, everything else is the same. These sequence of images, we call them frames, and they are produced or display in sequence to produce the effect of motion. Uh, uh, so the movie is displaying this frame, the sequence of image, uh, at a rate uh, faster than the human uh, can notice. That's why we see it as a movie and something uh, moving. Uh, each frame is an image of a scene taking a fraction of a second later than the previous frame. Usually, uh, uh, a movie uh, can take a frame 24 per second or 32 uh, a frame per second. Uh, the number of a frame uh, per second will be higher if uh, the movie is an action movie and you want to see the detail of the moving. Uh, so, if we think about uh, uh, slow motion, usually in a slow motion uh, movie, uh, the frame per uh, second will be higher because we are trying to capture something fast, something that's happening at uh, fast, but in a way that we can uh, see all the detail of it. 
Uh, again, the frames are displayed at the appropriate rate to produce the motion picture on a screen. So the amount of a frame that are taking per second, it's going to be appropriate to produce the motion that we want on the screen. The most common uh, format for a uh, movie are MPG or MP4. Uh, and uh, the most uh, and w which are using variety of, comp uh, of of technique to compress a video. So as we said, images are consisting of multiple frame where each frame is actually an image. But the difference between uh, the frame and the image is usually these frames are kind of similar. Like you could have 24 frames in a second which are kind of similar. Uh, the only difference is like uh, a, a moving of the lips or the hand uh, of a person. Uh, because of this reason, uh, in order for us uh, to compress uh, uh, the image, to compress the image, each individual frame use technique similar to BGBG uh, to uh, to make uh, the frame uh, size smaller in the disk. Uh, and also, uh, by taking the advantage that most of the time are the frame are uh, similar, uh, the only thing that these uh, compression uh, format MB4 and MBG are doing is instead of uh, saving the entire uh, image, they only, uh, for example, save the first image, the first frame, and then in regard to second frame, they can only uh, save the difference between them. Uh, in reality, actually, uh, image are uh, uh, represented using a matrix. And with the operation of the matrix, we can uh, uh, take the difference between two images easily. Uh, so the matrix is the same as the grid that we saw uh, representing the pixel. Uh, so this is gonna reduce the redundancy and if we are reducing the redundancy that means we're gonna be able to reduce the file size. Uh, while uh, the compression rate uh, depend on the content of the movie, but storing to our movie is roughly 500 megabyte, where uh, 3 kilobyte per frame in MPG format. So using MPG or MP4, we are able to store to our movie in roughly 500 megabit while maybe other uh, megabyte while other uh, format could store to our movie in 1.5 gigabyte uh, again this is going to depend on the content of the movie if the movie is about a person who just is speaking and he's in the same location uh, the compression rate will be more but if the movie is uh, going out from different scene to another and the movie has uh, many frame and it's in HD and uh, better uh, and more pixel uh, uh, the, uh, the number will be different also the movie are stored in physical format like the DVD and Blu-ray DVD are usually used to store a standard movie and the standard movie have a resolution of 720 uh, multiply by 480. Uh, the capacity of the DVD is in single layer 4.7 gigabyte in the double layer is 8.5 gigabyte.
Blu-ray is used to store uh, high definition movie and full definition uh, movie so the resolution could end up to be uh, 1920 by 1080 so by the end of this lecture, we understand that the computer uh, represents all these kind of data using binary code. Uh, but how the computer know the type of uh, value stored in particular piece of memory? The short answer, the computer does not know. Because when we explain in this lecture, with one bit, I can represent 0 or 1. 0 or 1 could be the number 0, uh, I mean like uh, 0 in binary as a code could be uh, number 0 or could be a color white. Uh, so uh, as the example here, this bit pattern here, uh, if encountered, the computer uh, might represent it as the integer 97 or the character A uh, in a small or even a fragment of image. So how the computer know what uh, type of data it is? Uh, when we are storing the data or when any program try to store data in memory, it must store additional information and this additional information will let the computer know what is the type of data so again the same bit pattern may represent different value in different contexts and you can use this uh, website here uh, to put a binary number uh, up to 32 bit and it's gonna give you uh, all the possible uh, value uh, in, uh, uh, in the data like for example it's gonna give you here in decimal uh, single precision real number and an ASCII test, uh, text uh, so I would advise you to use this website uh, to check uh, if your uh, answer for the conversion of uh, binary number to decimal is correct but to try first to do the conversion in hand use this application or this website only to check the answer because as you see in this uh, last slide is we are asking you to convert from binary to decimal so try to convert this number from binary to decimal using the procedure we explain in the lecture and uh, after you get the value in decimal uh, put this code on the previous uh, application here and check what is the value will be in decimal and you might notice that it's actually uh, also represent any uh, another uh, data type you can also use the ASCII table uh, to find uh, the binary code for each of the following text. Uh, thank you so much.